This model explains how we get the job done when we're working as experts with people and things. And this can apply to any kind of expertise, whether you're kind of an engineer or a leader or a teacher or a surgeon, doesn't really matter. You've got expertise and you have expertise because you're able to control things on the one hand of this triangle and understand people. So controlling things means using tools, using technology, using resources. Okay, you're controlling those things. But on the other hand, you also have to understand what people need and want, and that could be your colleagues or your customers. Um, so you have to have an understanding. Now, different people are better or worse at different parts of this particular triangle. Some people are great at controlling things, some people are great at understanding people, but we all have to do both. And what's interesting is every single job that we do is slightly different as to what, you know, how we make this kind of dance work. And we're all constantly improvising. Now, that's a kind of model of how we get the job done. Uh, and what's interesting here is that when things are going fine, everything's working exactly as we expect it to, yeah, we're happy. And actually, when we're happy, we don't really pay that much attention to what we're doing because it's going fine. We don't need to. And we certainly don't tell stories about everything's going fine. That's a very quick story. Yeah, everything's going fine. Off we go. Let's move on to something else. But here's an interesting thing. When things are not going fine, right, when things, the things or the people aren't doing what you expect them to do as part of your model of understanding, well, that's when, first of all, we feel emotion. Yeah, we feel negative emotion or, or well, at the very least, we feel surprised, possibly sad, possibly angry. Not just we feel it, but other people feel it too. And those emotions are little indicators, little flashing lights on our dashboard that something is wrong. But they're also a great way to get into the kind of story that can help you fix the problem through the emotion. So, OK, let's just explore that. So something is going wrong with the things. Yes, I, ex I assumed when I hit this button, that machine would work and it doesn't. And I don't know why. Or something's going wrong with the people. Customers are getting really angry because this isn't working for them. And yep, yeah, and they're telling me they're really cross. Or my colleagues are really hacked off because. OK, so the emotions are telling you that something is up. And they also allow you to tell the beginnings of a troubleshooting story. OK, and the troubleshooting story is not things are going fine, but this thing is wrong. So the troubleshooting stories can go very simple little template. I felt a negative emotion or surprise or whatever when this thing happened. Because I'd assumed that, yeah, my model was either the people would do this or the things would do that. OK, now that's broken down and so I. OK, so I'm now going to look more closely at controlling the things that are causing the problem, or I'm going to look more closely at understanding the, the people that are causing the problem. OK. You can have that troubleshooting story as yourself, the expert. Yes, it's your experience of working this model. Or you can spread it out and say, OK, well, he or she, the customer, felt this negative emotion when this thing happened, this moment happened, because they'd assumed yeah, their model. So let's try this. OK, so we've got this basic model of how experts get things done by controlling things and understanding people. But experts are not working alone. So we are surrounded in most companies by other experts. And they are also dancing on that triangle of controlling things and understanding people. And of course, when things go well, experts speak to other experts almost like in, in a code, in shorthand. They can get, yeah, use jargon, can get get cover an awful lot of ground very quickly because things are going okay but of course when things are going wrong or unexpected when something's changing that they don't understand in the model then they will tell stories with other experts and those stories are either about stupid bloody things or stupid bloody people okay so in an organization with all the experts in the organization these stories can be flowing around Sometimes they're not, but they can be flowing around about, OK, how did you get the job done? Oh, you got it. That, OK, how, oh, this is how I did it. And so 
quite quickly, you can see here there is a model for a kind of storytelling, which is training stories. Yeah, really important in any organization. How do you pass on the expertise? So, okay, when this has, he or she felt like this, because this happened, um, and they'd assumed, yeah, and so they did this to change the model that they were using, and that's a training story, and it's a little moment in time. It's the little picture, not the big picture. Also really interesting is you can see where you get culture stories here as well. The, the moral of a culture story is this is how things work around here. This is how we get the job done. So typically when something goes wrong, we act like this. Now, interestingly, you get bad culture stories in a bad culture. When things go wrong, we hide, we cover up, we blame other people. Well, that's a terrible culture. Um, okay. So it's up to you what kind of culture you have, but it's reflected in the stories people tell. Okay, there's another way of looking at this. So, okay, so we now get to talk about organizations. And so in the leader of an organization, it's almost like they're, they're kind of, in a lot of ways, they're keeping like a little protective umbrella over their experts because they want the experts to get on with the job. And, and the leadership of the organization will shield them from all the stuff they don't need to worry about whilst they get on with the job. Fine. But in your organization, how do stories work their way up to the leaders? So how is it when an expert wants to give feedback on something that's not working as it should? OK, so a feedback story goes something like, well, look, we're supposed to be doing this thing, um, but instead we're finding this. Yeah. And so you need to know or you need to do something about this. Well, that's a feedback story. And again, it's happening in the moment. Here's the thing that's going wrong. If things are going fine, we don't tell stories. OK, so feedback stories obviously flow up a good organisation, if you know what you're doing. And of course, there are stories that flow down as well. And these are kind of strategy stories from the leadership of the organisation to the experts who work for them. And it's Basically, it's about change as well. If everything's going fine, you don't tell a story. But when you need to change, you're going, okay, we used to do this, this, and this, but now things have changed. We've got to do this, this, and this. And so here's the important thing you need to do. So those are the sort of strategy stories that flow down the organization. And then we get into the stories that travel outside the organization. And the number one important story that should flow out of your organization is a sales story where you're talking to customers. Um, and the customers, the story customers want to hear is about people like them. So if you're dealing with a, a manufacturer in Germany, that manufacturer wants to know that you've worked with other manufacturers, ideally in Germany. Okay, so in other words, the sales story goes something like, look, we work with people like you. They trust us to get their job done, so you can trust us too. And clearly for every customer you deal with, you've got a story you can tell to a potential customer you want to deal with. But also there's a story that kind of goes out wider than that, which is your brand story. You know, this is how we get the job done. This is why you can trust us. Or this is why you want to work with us or work for us. Um, so brand stories and kind of stakeholder stories but they're all made up of those individual stories of, look, oh, this, is, this is how we do it. From this, you can see that there are a number of stories you need if you want to get the job done. So you need to be able to tell expert stories. Your experts need to be able to tell expert stories. Your customers need to hear those expert stories from you. You need troubleshooting stories, because otherwise, how are you going to get the job done anyway? You need training stories, especially, especially for new staff coming into your organization. They need to know how to do things. They need to know the culture. How do we do things around here? What is OK? What's not OK in our culture? You need feedback stories going up and down your organization and across your organization, too. Otherwise, how are you supposed to know what's actually happening if you're a leader, what's actually happening at the actual cutting edge of your organization and as a leader you need to be able to tell strategy stories across the organization to say look this is changing therefore we need to and then you need to tell stories outside the organization principally sales stories and brand 
stories. Now, all of those stories have certain things in common. They're all about change. We just don't tell stories when things don't change. They're all about people, ultimately, and things, but people mainly. And they're also, they're about value. Yeah, I'm telling you this because it's useful information. I'm telling you this because it's valuable to you. So when you understand those kind of basics, you can start to assemble what it is you need to tell those kind of stories that will get the job done in your organization.